So finally, with the help of the current Cadio firmware, we can make the complete all-in-one home automation project that can help us to control up to 4 AC appliances and also speed off one AC fan using Cadio mobile application, manual switches, IR remote, RF remote, and voice assistance. Not only that, we can also able to see the current temperature and humidity data on the Cadio mobile app. And also, if there is no internet connectivity at all, we can still control the appliances with the help of the manual switches and both the remotes. And with all of this, you can also get the features like scheduling appliances, putting timer to a particular device, controlling the devices using sensors data and many more things. So this was that firmware which we all were waiting for so long and also you can get the Cario lifetime license for our all-in-one home automation project for absolutely free and how you can get that, well, I'll let you know that by the end of the video so stick around and watch the video till the end to learn how to make this and to know how to get the free license for lifetime. <laughs> Let's get started. This video is sponsored by LTM and they came up with an amazing product called as LTM365. So LTM365 is an electronics product design platform that unites PCB design, MCAD, data management and teamwork. So with LTM365, you can do the PCB designing task. You can share your projects over web for review purposes. It do cover sharing your PCB file to mechanical team so that they can create the mechanical product package based on your PCB. Then it also provides centralized cloud storage so you don't need to rely on one single computer for your files. It also helps you with managing your components and get real-time supply chain data for your components. It also allows multiple people to work on single project. And in the end, it also helps you with sending your design to final manufacturing units. So LTM 365 takes care of all other tasks so you put more time and effort in making something creative and useful. And the good part is you can try out its free version as well. I'll leave its free trial version link down in the description of this video so do check that out. And now let us start with this video. So now for making this project we will need these all components and we need to connect them all according to this schematic diagram. Now after we finalized the schematic diagram, we designed our own custom PCB for this project and we gave its order directly to JLC PCB. Now even you can try ordering your own custom PCBs from JLC PCB by following very simple steps. You just need to upload the Gerber file of your PCB project, select the number of PCBs and color masking and this time we even ordered one stencil to shoulder all the SMD components. Now after that, just place your order. And here, if you select the fastest shipping option, you may get the PCBs delivered at your desired location within a week. So finally, we received our PCBs and stencils at our studio. And here, just look at this PCB. The quality is really amazing. So do try ordering the PCBs for your next projects from JLC PCB. And not only that, JLC PCB also provides the SMT assembly service and the 3D printing service. I'll be leaving away all the important links down in the description of this video. So do check them out. So after getting the PCBs, we started with shouldering all the SMT components first using our reflow oven. And after we are done with the SMT part, we started shouldering the rest of the components and after shouldering them all, the final project looks like this. Neat and compact. Now along with this hardware, we'll need a DHT11 sensor, an IR receiver, a SRX882 RF receiver and no, not this, but here will require an up and down switch. Now this is not a toggle switch, rather it's a push type switch in which the shaft comes back to its original position after pushing it up or down. Now at the end of the video, I'll be showing you the complete connection diagram for all of this and with this, we come to the end for the hardware part of the project. Now let's move on to the firmware part. So after the hardware part, let's try to flash the Cadio firmware into our all-in-one version 3 and for that, you need to go to this uh, Cadio website and here you need to download the latest firmware for ESP32. As of now, the version is 192 underscore beta, okay? Just click here and it will start downloading the firmware file. I'll save it inside my downloads folder. After that, you also need the ESP flash download tool. For that, you just need to click here and you need to download this flash download tools. As of now, it is available only for Windows system. So you need to have a Windows system for doing this, uh, flashing the firmware. In my case, I already downloaded and installed it. So I won't be downloading it again. Okay. After that, you need to open the flash download tool. So here's the flash download tool. I'll double click it and I will start running this flash download tool.exe file. Select the chips uh, type as ESP32 and click on OK. 
Okay, so this is how the flash download tool will open up. Now here we need to provide the firmware file and before that uh, we need to extract that uh, downloaded file. So I'll go to my downloads folder and I will click on the file which I have downloaded which is this. I'll right click on it and I will click on extract here. Okay. So it has successfully extracted. Now I can go back to the flash download tools and I, I will click on this three dots. Here I'll go to my downloads folder and uh, into this firmware file. And here, as you can see, there are four different folders uh, that contains four different binary files. So I'll in, uh, select one by one uh, all the four files. So I will go inside the zero cross 1000, select this for binary file and I'll give the address same as that of uh, which was mentioned on the folders name, which is zero cross 1000. Similarly, I'll go back to the folder, select the second one, which goes by the address zero cross 8000, which I'll mention here then repeating this step for the third time which is zero cross 10,000 that i will mention here and last time we need to do the same step which is zero cross e triple zero and that i will mention here perfect after that i'll tick mark all the four firmware files after that, uh, you need to connect this uh, uh, all-in-one home automation project with your computer via the Type-C USB cable and select the right COM port, which is COM15. And first, you need to click on the erase button, which will erase the pre-built firmware files uh, to make sure everything works perfectly fine once we, you know, uh, provide the new firmware. Okay, so the firmware is successfully erased and now I'll click on the start button which will start flashing the new latest CADIO firmware inside an all-in-one version 3. And yeah, the process is completed. And with this, we have successfully flashed the CADIO firmware in our all-in-one home automation project. And now let us move on to the configuration part. So for configuration, you first need to download this CADIO mobile application, which is available for both Android and iOS. And if you already installed it, make sure it is updated to the latest version. After that, just click on the open button, make an account and log in into your account. After doing that, what you do is you need to make sure the mobile network is turned off. And after that, just open your Wi-Fi settings and connect to the CADIO access point created by the CADIO home automation or the CADIO ESP32 firmware. After connecting to the access point, just go to the configuration page and it will open up the configuration page of the ESP32 board where we need to provide all the GPIO pins for the particular relay and switches. So for the reference purpose, according to our all-in-one project, I have already created a document which has all the GPIO pins corresponding to all the relays, switches, fan relay, fan switch and all these sensors. Okay. So what I'll do, I'll quickly configure all of this. But before that, make sure the switch handling is set to polling because uh, the interrupt one doesn't work with the all-in-one home automation project. Straight after that, we'll turn on the 433 MHz and IR because it is working with the both the remotes. And the GPI pin for 433 MHz means RF is set to 27. So I'll select 27 here and IR is set to the 17. So I'll set 17 GPIO. After that, here we'll uh, select the indication mode as single. Okay, but still we are not using any indicator LED because we haven't configured that LED onto the hardware. After that, what we will do is we'll quickly create four different relays, which is four different on off devices. Okay. And after that, we will add one fan device. So this feature is newly added to the latest firmware. And then we will add the DHT11 sensor. Now I'll configure the relays according to this pin number. So first is attached to GPIO 25 and the corresponding switch is attached to GPIO 32. Similarly, I'll uh, configure all the other three relays. Okay, so we successfully configured all the four relays and switches. For the fan, we need to go to this section, which is fan speed controller. And here we need to define all the three relays. So the fan relay one is attached to GPIO 21. The second relay is attached to GPIO 19 and the third one at GPIO 18. And the speed up and speed down push button are attached to 14 and 13 GPIO respectively. So I'll select those GPIOs here. Great. And in the end, the DHT is attached to GPIO 16. And with this, we have successfully configured all the GPIO pins for all in one home automation project. After that, I'll click on the check mark icon. So now we need to provide the Wi-Fi credentials. So let us wait for that page. So here is that page where we can provide the Wi-Fi credentials to make this project talk to internet. Here I'll select my Wi-Fi router and I'll provide the password for it. Then you need to give a unit name. I'll name it as AIO, which stands for all in one. And after uh, cross checking everything, I'll simply uh, click on this checkmark icon. 
So yeah, that was all about the configuration of the CADIO application for our all-in-one home automation project. So after configuring, we started installing this project and we made the connections of the appliances and other peripherals according to this connection diagram. Now here, the up and down switch got easily attached with the fan regulator plate and it seamlessly got placed in the switchboard. Well, it do look a bit different and odd, so to make it look bit decent, we designed a 3D printed cap for it and after adding some glue, we stick that cap onto the shaft of our up down switch and now it looks much better than before. Now before testing the complete project in action, let me guide you how to integrate the RF and IR remote with our project. For that, just long press on any of the appliances and here you'll be able to see the 433 MHz and the infrared remote option. Let's just start with the 433 MHz or the RF remote. Just uh, click on this icon and here you'll be able to see the three different options. The on off signal, the on signal and off signal. Now here you can provide the signal particularly for turning on the appliance and turning off the appliance. But by providing signal to this particular option, you can turn on and off the appliances with the help of one single button. So with this, you'll be saving a lot of buttons. So let us go for this option only. So just click on this option and it says waiting for the signal. So now here I'll take one RF remote which works on 433 MHz. You can choose any of the RF remote but make sure the frequency is 433 MHz only. Now here we need to press the button so I'll press the button A. As you can see the data is being captured by this device and if I check mark this box I can control that light with the help of the button A quite easily. Okay. And similarly, we can add the infrared remote as well for that. Just click on the infrared icon and here also we are able to see the three option. Let's just go with the on off signal only. Now here I'll take an infrared remote. Now you can take any infrared remote, maybe your TV remote, your, your set up box remote, any IRBS remote. Okay. Now make sure uh, the IR remote only works in line of sight. So uh, the IR receiver should be outside the switchboard or it should be visible to the remote at least. Okay. So I'll press the button one and the data is captured by the IR receiver. I'll click on this icon and now I can turn on the light with the help of the IR remote as well quite easily. And similarly, you can do the same steps for all other appliances so that you can control everything using the remotes. But in case of fan, we don't have uh, anything to control the speed. So if I go to the 433 MHz, I do have the option for turning on and turning off the fan. We don't have anything for controlling its speed. So this is kind of a missing feature here. They should give the option for turning uh, the speed up and down as well. So yeah, that was the process about integrating IR and RF remote. Now I need to guide you one more thing, which is about the DST sensor. As you can see, the data shown here is not accurate. Okay. So 768 degrees Celsius is way too high for a human being. So to get the accurate data, what you need to do is you need to go to settings and here you need to select the sensor type as DHT11 and just wait for a couple of seconds. As you can see, we got the accurate reading. So temperature is 30 degrees Celsius and humidity is 32 percentage. So yeah, that was all about the complete configuration. And now we are ready to see our project working live in action. So here we are easily able to control the appliances using CADI mobile application and also able to control the speed of fan using it along with this. We can also monitor the live temperature and humidity data on the app itself. Now let's test with the manual switches. Great, we are able to control the lights and also control the speed of the fan using the up and down switch and we are getting its real time feedback on the app. Now let us test them with the remotes. So here with RF remote, we can control three lights and also can turn on and off the fan using it. We don't have any option to control the speed of the fan. Now let's test with the IR remote. Great, IR remote also works quite smooth with this. And the great part is we can get the real time feedback for both the remotes on the app. Now let's test with the voice assistants. Hello. Turn on first bulb. Okay. Hello. Turn on second bulb. Okay. Hello. Turn on blue fan. Okay. Hello. Set blue fan 20%. Okay. Hello. Set blue fan 100%. Okay. Turn on first bulb. All right, turning first bulb on. Turn on second bulb. Go 
Got it. Turning the second bulb on. Turn on blue fan. All right. Turning on blue fan. Set blue fan fifty percent. Got it. Setting blue fan brightness to fifty percent. Now let's try to turn off the router and test it in without internet mode. So without internet, we can control the appliances using both the remotes and also with the help of manual switches which is awesome. So this project got everything you need in a quite compact size. So that was our all-in-one home automation project version 3 using Cadio and now it's the time to announce that Cadio license giveaway. So we are providing the Cadio lifetime license for absolutely free to first 10 buyers who will purchase our all-in-one home automation project with pre-installed Cadio firmware in it. So we have created a separate page for all-in-one home automation version 3 with Cadio. Of course, it comes with the RF receiver in it, so price is a little bit higher as compared to the other all-in-one version. But this version comes with that pre-shouldered jumper that will help you to support your RF model with it. And also it will come with a nice looking 3D printed case. As of now, we are only providing the IR remote along with this project, but soon we'll be adding an RF remote as well. And maybe when you're watching this video, the RF remote is already been added. So do check that out. So this giveaway is in collaboration with Cadio and it is only for the first 10 buyers. So go get your all-in-one home automation project right now from the link mentioned in the description. And if you are the first 10 buyers, well, you'll be getting a lifetime license worth rupees 7.99 for absolutely free. And you'll be able to control your home and office appliances for free lifetime using Cadio. And with this, I'm ending this video. Do subscribe to my channel if you want to see more such uh, project tutorials in the field of home automation and IoT. And yeah, that being said, I'm just ending this video here. And now just wait for my next video. Until then, explore, learn, share with me. Techie SMS.